This is Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Intuitive Oracle Jamie Hearn. Jamie stirs the cauldron with witches, shamans, healers, psychics, and mediums who bravely share their power and give you insight into what conversations with dead people really look like. It's probably not what you think. Sometimes hilarious, sometimes macabre, and always informative. Hello and welcome back to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. I'm Jamie Hearn. Today, I'm super excited to chat with the Oracle on Purpose, Leah Dunlap. Leah is the founder of Oracle on Purpose, a business coaching company that specializes in helping entrepreneurs and business owners discover and fulfill their unique life purpose. At Oracle on Purpose, they believe that by understanding the power of your why, you can live a purpose-driven life while unlocking your true potential. Leah is the Oracle on Purpose, an intuitive business architect and purpose and prosperity mentor. I mean, all of those things are magic and we could probably spend our whole time talking about any one of them, but I want to touch on all of them. So welcome, Leah. Thank you so much, Jamie, for having me. I am so grateful to be here and share this uh, space with you and this magical uh, opportunity. Well, I'm excited to learn about you and where you came from. Like, how did you end up uh, uh, like really feeling aligned with the term Oracle on purpose? (laughs) Ah, so I would always, I like to say I was the Oracle. If you've watched the Matrix, those of you out there watch the Matrix. I said, I'm the original Oracle. That's why I call myself the Oracle on purpose. Um, I started uh, understanding and seeing and and getting insights for people at a very young age, very, very young, like three to five, um, and was told by my family, it's not nice to tell people about themselves in front of other people. So that was kind of the first sign that something was different. Um, And I didn't really take on the mantle of Oracle until I was much older, but I always did the work. The work was always in me. Uh, And so when I was about 14 is when I really started to actively utilize my skills to help people. And um, I started literally holding court in the drama room, practice rooms, the and, and where they like would do the music and drama work together. And people would come in, kids from school would come in and ask to see me and we'd sit and I'd hold these sessions with them. Wow. So I knew all along that there was something special about that, that, that it was meant for me to share. So there, that's where the purpose piece came for me. It's like, I knew that I was here on purpose. I knew that I had a reason for knowing these things for people. It wasn't until much later when it became part of my business function, because I started out as a hypnotherapist. I wanted to speak. So I went to a speaking summit um, to learn how to speak better on stage. And in the process, found out that this voice that I kind of semi forgotten about was loud and clear and really wanted to help other people. And so during the session, I literally blurt something out from the Oracle to someone who's on stage struggling. And everybody turned and looked at me and said, what? And I'm like, oh, did I say that out loud? And as we were going on, and then somebody in the audience goes like, oh my gosh, you're, you're like the Oracle. And I was like, oh, well, is that, I honestly was like, oh, okay. Like, is that what it is? And suddenly it all kind of gelled in together because what I was speaking about was this power of purpose that I really believe that we're all here for a unique life purpose. And then that's where Oracle on Purpose was born because we put that's the two amazing. together and it was like, yeah, that's it. I am the Oracle on Purpose. I can help people understand what it is that they're meant to be doing. I see their path forward and I can help them to do it in a much more aligned way so they can have some joy, ease and prosperity. That's that's exactly what everybody's looking for it, in some way, shape or form. Um, And add a little wild sex in there. And I think you cover all the bases. Yeah, right. I love that. Yes, definitely. Definitely more passion is a good thing in all forms for sure. Yeah. But I love that this gift was showing up for you at such a young age. And you have a story that a lot of us who are connected have. Like when you're little, 
it's natural and you think it's normal and and it is normal for us but the people around us have this fear-based shit that they're oh, working God. through and they're like psh, psh, psh. oh absolutely i mean I, I i always talk about the fact that um for my family i am like completely literally like first of all i grew up in an all-white family so i'm literally the black sheep of the family <laughs> in more shapes than ways than one and so they did not understand nor appreciate nor encourage um, my insights, my ahas. Um, they used to call me, get this, this is amazing. I think people here will really appreciate this. They used to call me crazy Leah. That was their term for me. So when I was old enough, I got a VW bug and I got my first personalized license plate and it was K-R-A-Z-L-I-A. I was like, okay, if you're going to call me crazy, I'm going to, I'm going to wear the mantle. It. I'll take it on. Because I'm having a lot more fun than you. I'm enjoying my life. I'm being real. I'm being who I am. And I was probably uh, 18 at the time. And I was like, I'm done pretending that I'm wrong because I'm different. And that was that was my first step away um, from a family environment where what I was doing was so different than what they were creating in their little um you know, I'm, I'm a product of the 60s, you know, in their little white boxed homogenized version of the kids and the family in the house. And I was like, I want to travel the world. I want to, I want to help people all over. I want to make lots of money. I want to joy, joyously embody this experience um, was not on their list of things you should do. Well, and coupled with the fact that you're receiving downloads from things they can't see, and it's total magic. Yes. Right. I, I don't know if anybody in your, uh, who your listeners are listening to this that, and I want to share this because I think this was a vital part of that was when I was younger, I was told, um, I was imagining things. I was told that the images and visions I was having were nightmares and just dreams and I should just ignore them. And it took a long time. Like I said, I mean, I mean, it doesn't seem like a long time, but nine years, I was 14 before the, I had my first experience of a full body apparition in my room. And I was like old enough to recognize this is not a dream. This is actually happening. And I, and I wish I could go back to her and let her know at seven and eight, nine and 10 and 12, like this is a gift. You are yep. special in a way that they don't understand. And I always say like for them, it was fearful because they didn't know what to do with it. Right. Well, they didn't know how to handle somebody who could see right through them. And that kind of sounds like a pretty powerful healing exercise to go back and talk to her. Absolutely. Oh, we've had many conversations now for sure. You know, this has been, you know, I'm in, I'm, you know, in my mid fifties and I, and I, I love working and, and speaking to people that are younger or women who at 30, 40 and 50 finally are admitting that they do have this, right. Cause that's a big right. piece of it. Yeah, well, for sure. And the, the age thing comes up with a lot of conversations I have with people and they're like, Oh, I wish I did this when I was young, but I really encourage everybody who's at whatever point they're at to recognize that this is the right time for you. The age you're at doesn't matter. Taking the step into a more aligned existence with who you truly are, that's all that matters. Absolutely, Jamie, you're so right. It's such a powerful place to just accept. Like that that opens up so much and it doesn't matter. There is only now, like right? we're only in now and I think that everything does happen absolutely for a reason at the right time because you have everything that you've learned you're at a place where you're either like hey I'm just going to be me and I've I've done it the hard way long enough which I think is a lot of times the case yeah and what wisdom and and breadth of knowledge you have to bring to what you're going to create with your gifts and talents yeah absolutely and everyone is always their harshest critic because they have that little six or seven or eight year old voice saying stop being weird stop making shit up stop like all the things oh man that's true true like it I I remember that um when I was 
when I was just starting out, I had a client that I worked with. And when I came out as the Oracle and I like really took the mantle on, I had been working in, like I said, as a hypnotherapist, um, I had dodged like every angle I could to not say, Hey, I actually can hear what you're saying. And I know what you're thinking. Um, and so I would like, like layer all these conversations. I say, like I couched it in all of this technical mumbo jumbo that I knew to try to get the answer out to someone. And one day a client of mine was sitting there and the Oracle said to me, she asked a question. She's like, what do I need to do? And the Oracle said, she needs to stop doing. I'm like, doing what? Like, I need a little more than that. I don't know how to do this conversation. So I started asking all these weird, random questions. It was so crazy. She was so like, no, no, don't get it. Don't get it. I was like getting so frustrated. And finally, I just blurt out again. I'm like, okay, she says you need to stop doing. Now, I, the funniest thing that happened there was I said, she says, not I say. And then my client was like, what? And I, and I said, okay. So the Oracle says that you need to stop doing. And she's like, I know. And it just opened her up. And I'm like, that makes sense to you. And she says, it's perfect sense. Because all I'm thinking is I just got to keep doing and doing and doing and doing. And the Oracle said, no, you have to stop doing. And the second that happened, I really began to see that as channels, as people who have gifts and talents, it's not my job to decide how the information gets used. It's my job to deliver it. And it's my job to deliver right. it as, as at that time, like you just said, the timing is important. Like it made sense to her at that time. Maybe it wouldn't, if I kind of came back to it a while ago, yeah, you know, she did say this, right? So I think there's just these layers where we have to get comfortable with the fact that as powerful and gifted as we are, no matter what, timing wise, if you're here and you're present and you're consistently connected, then you can deliver exactly what you're meant to deliver in the world. So I'm hearing you talk about the Oracle, like she's a, a, a piece of you that like exists in her own realm. So can you tell us more about that? Yes. Thank you for asking about that, because I think that for me, um, and I do believe it's probably because when it happened to me, I was so young. So I know I work and, 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 you know, spend time with a lot of different people in, in healing fields. And they're curious about that as well, because for me, um, the Oracle sits over my right shoulder and I say, it's a she, and I say, I can hear her or feel her sending me messages. And as I've gotten older, what I realized is I think it made me com more comfortable as a young person, especially because of my history with my family, not to really allow that inside of my own body. So I put her on a shelf over my shoulder and I called her she. And now that I'm older and I'm, I've had more experience, I recognize that um, if I were to say what is the Oracle, it's a non-sentient existence that has this direct line of communication to me. And it connects to everyone else's guides and what I call the ultra conscious mind, the one mind. And so I'm not, I'm comfortable like an old friend, like it's a nickname, <laughs> I guess is the best way of saying it, right? It's a nickname that I can call up and yet it's always a part of my own thought patterns and it brings in, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a partnership now right? It's a cohesive partnership where I feel like I can hear that voice outside of me, but we're also communicating together through me to, to help someone. So I'm much more comfortable after utilizing this skill for 40 years to be just like, let it come through as it does. And it's more woven than it used to be. Um, and so sometimes it feels like she's over there. Um, and sometimes it just feels like I feel it through my system and I just share it. So does she ever give you a little prod like, hey, Leah, what are you doing, oh, sister? Man. Oh, man. I'm the worst client for my Oracle. 
I'm going to be honest with you. Can I be straight with you, Jamie? That's seriously. And, and I asked somebody, say me, how can that be? I said, because I like being human and I am a brat and I hear her. And I think I grew up, my person and I was very bratty and sassy and I could do whatever I want to do. And so if she tells me like, mm, I think you should probably call that person or um, don't forget your jacket. I'm like, yeah, I don't need my jacket. I'm like a little kid. I'm like, I don't need my jacket. Then when the rain comes and I'm like, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I heard it. I get it. And I told my friend that one time. She's like, well, how come you don't listen all the time? I'm like, cause I'm a human being. <laughs> I, I, and, I like, and you, if I listen, I mean, granted, I listen more often now than I ever have before. And yet literally the other day I was like, seriously, I can't believe I just did that. But how would you continue having to learn the same lesson until you learn it if you listened all the time? How will I learn anything, Jamie? That's such a great point. And, and I tell my clients that too, because I feel like sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves, um, that perfection, even, even people that I've worked with that are healers and intuitives, I'm like, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you go out with this God complex that you're going to have to know all the answers all the time, you're not going to have any fun. It's too much pressure. Right. Can you it's imagine the weight of that? Pressure. No, thank you. <laughs> like, it's like being on. And sometimes to be fair, like I do live events and I do like um, week long retreats and we go all over the world. And during those retreats, I am on, I'm going to be, I'll be freakly honest. I am on 95% of the time, unless I'm sleeping. Sure. Uh, because I create the container. I have all these people there and I'm working. I'm working with the energy. I'm working with the, the downloads. I'm crafting and creating and holding space. And so to that point, when it's a Friday and I'm sitting around my house, I'm going to just be human for a day. I'm going to take that off and say, I don't want to know all the things right now. I want to just be here. And the beauty to me is that, that, that spirit will always allow that. Like that to me is free will. And you need that. Uh, yeah, because our little bodies, our human bodies, that's a lot of energy. And our human bodies aren't designed to manage that much energy. And I have, um, I don't know about you, Jamie, but I've, I've met people in my life who, who take on that mantle from that kind of God perspective, and they can't handle it. They can't handle it. They, they find themselves having like literally mental shifts and breakdowns because of it. And it's like, that's not the point of it. In my right. opinion, it is not to torture us, right? And if you get to a place where it, it becomes such a burden, then you're not serving anyone, including yourself and the world that gave you this gift. For sure. Um, you mentioned something a minute ago that I want to make sure we touch on because it's like one of my favorite things. Oh. And I think our listeners probably will be interested in it too. You said that you go on week long retreats with people, with, with clients, I'm guessing, which, you know, is a really big container, as you said. So I don't want to shift topics too much, but I want to make sure we talk about that. And with my cold brain, I might forget. So can we talk about that now? Right. Yeah. In fact, I'm getting ready to go do one next week. Um, it's a shorter one this time. Um, what I what I realized in in creating the container um, is that I I have worked in many different ways. Like I've worked on one on one calls with people and things like that. Um, when I created the the Master Creators Alchemy retreats, it was because I wanted to take the stuff that was heavy and I wanted to move all the way through the process with someone and not leave them with like just a little nugget. I wanted to say, okay, now you have a nugget. Now let's integrate that into your life and your vision and your goals for the future. And I want to give you space and time and a place to have that really settle. And I think that a lot of times um, 
I'll speak for myself. When I just have a one-off time with someone, I, I, there's a lingering sense of we could do more with that if we could just dig in a little bit deeper. Um, so I created these spaces where we can take away from everything else we're doing, which is why most of mine are international because it makes it hard to be on your cell and all those things. And you literally step away from the norm into a space that is really sacred and beautiful and supportive. And we just dive into what comes through for you and what's blocking you in what you're meant to be creating here in the world. What's your purpose? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do with it? And then what might be some of those pitfalls or things that you've been carrying around some old garbage that we can clear out of the way so that when you walk away from it, you're stepping into your fullness more. You have some things that maybe you've left behind some baggage and you kind of have this clear path forward to really create more in your life, more joy, more ease, more freedom, more prosperity, more authenticity, because the world really meant to create you. It wasn't a mistake. I love that. And I myself am a huge fan of the retreat model. I mean, I feel like people who come for one-off sessions aren't quite as invested in actually making a change, you know, like money aside. Yes. Yeah. They're not, like, they're not all in. They're like, Oh, let me, let me dip my toe and maybe I'll circle back. And I'm not interested in that. Like I want to, I want to change things for people. I want to make people's lives better. Yes, absolutely. It's the depth of that that processing that I think people miss when they're like, oh, I don't know, maybe you've ever had this work. Like someone will get on the call and they'll be like, well, I talked to my psychic and I talked to my counselor and I talked to this person and they all told me this thing. And I remember one client did that one time. And I said, so when are you? So O said, O wants, you to, wants me to ask you a question. They're like, yes. And I said, they said, when are you going to start listening? Like you can keep asking and asking and asking, but when are you actually going to start listening? Because I don't have a different answer for you. Right. Uh, and you spent, like you said, all this time running around to get an answer instead of doing the work. That happens a lot. Like people who aren't ready to really dive in, I'll ask them, are you looking for me to tell you something different? Because if so, you're going to have to tell me what you want me to tell you. Because I don't have a different answer. Uh, it's Right? It's so, I'm thinking to myself when people do that, it's like, aren't you tired of asking? Because I think that's it. Like, you can ask forever. You can want forever. And yes. there is no place in this experience as human beings, because we are living in a human experience, where you get a shift or change in your life, even for the better or worse, frankly, without some sort of co co-creative action from you so <laughs> it is not one-sided life doesn't happen life does not happen to you life happens through you right that's, and you you're you get, it you're the thing that's making life change it's not any other way and you get to make it all that you possibly can or you can sit back and be a victim and be like oh this was terrible right <laughs> Totally. And either way, you're doing it. Yeah. Either way, you're right. You're doing it. You're either making it miserable or you're making it amazing. And I don't even judge that, but be honest, right? Because once you know that, then that's when you get to take the power back of going, well, is that really what you want? You know, even if we extend our lives as long as we can, um, even if we're talking about like the, the multiple layers of the universe, everywhere you are, you're still there. So what do you want it to look like? Um, so I have a total random, random question for you. And this is really unusual to happen during a podcast, but I'm being pressed to, to call this to attention. Um, what is your connection to Egypt and, and how is that playing a role in your evolution? Oh, great question. Um, it's interesting you mentioned it. You just always come up a few times recently. So I'm like, oh, interesting. Oh, so Leah, that. how many people are going to have to bring it up before? I'm well, that's that's funny because I saw something come through for Egypt recently. And I was like, I wonder if that's our next retreat. Um, I have never been to Egypt. I have always um, had an affinity for Egyptian archetypes and imagery. Um, 
I was told by someone that I trust one day we were having a conversation. Um, she's like, oh, you're a Lemurian. I'm like, probably. I, I think that um, I, I hold all of these titles and, and influences, um, like I said, kind of gently because I believe in being in the state of wonder and possibility. And I believe that all things that are believable can be believed in and we can we can utilize something from them. So it's interesting you bring up Egypt because it's it just kind of made me chuckle like, okay, all right, I'll go look at Egypt again. Um, I don't have any like direct, I'm just checking. Yeah, I don't have any, she's laughing at me right now. I don't have any direct um, connections except that I do have an affinity for Egyptian archetypes, energy. Oh yeah, I did go to something here in, in our area um, for Nefertiti, which mm. I felt a lot of synergy there for sure. Yeah. So it's unfolding. I, I, think it is, I think we pulled a thread. I was like, wow, I can really feel that kind of um, unfolding. Yes, I'll take it. I'll take that unfolding. An Egyptian um, avenue is unfolding. Yes. Well, I, for one, will be watching with <laughs> great excitement to see where that pops up in the future with you me i'm i and i'm right there with you so i think i think we will definitely see where egypt takes us i think that's a really exciting notion um so before we conclude i want to make sure people know where to find you so wh what's the best place for people to learn more about you the best place is just right on my website oracleonpurpose.com and if you want to take an opportunity to dive deeper and have a conversation, I love for people to get started on their path. So I have um, a free gift that I offer everyone. It's called the Purpose and Prosperity Roadmap. Just like it sounds, all written out, purposeandprosperityroadmap.com. And it will take you on a little journey. Um, and if you need assistance at the end of that journey um, to know which direction to take next or what step to take next, it will lead you right to my door and we'll have a chat and we can talk more about that. Awesome. That sounds fantastic. I'm going to go check it out. <laughs> um, I, I would love to see where your next retreat is going and all the things you're doing and keep in touch. So definitely keep us in the loop. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Jamie. It's wonderful to be here. Well, I want to thank you and the Oracle for coming. Thanks everyone for listening. I'll see you next week on Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. Peace and badass magic. Thank you for listening to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Jamie Hearn. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in. 